By now, you've probably heard my magic wand story. It's a brand that's been part of my personal journey for more than 20 years. But no matter how many times I sing magic wands praises, I'll never be able to fully capture the story of this incredible brand. Well, now journalist and author Kate Sloan just completed a limited audio series documenting the history and impact that Magic Wand has created over the last 56 years. It's called Making Magic. And the series chronicles Magic Wand's incredible brand story through interviews with nearly 40 experts, performers, business owners, educators, and fans. So I got a sneak preview of the series. And what I loved is that Kate weaves together snippets from all their interviews into this amazing story arc. She covers Magic Wand's journey from a appliance store massager to its legendary influence on culture and sexual independence. And it's all just fascinating. The first episodes of Making Magic are available now at makingmagicseries.com or on all popular podcast platforms. Just search for Making Magic or visit makingmagicseries.com today. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. On today's show, I'm joined by singer and songwriter Carsey Blanton, who isn't shy about how sex and empowerment have influenced her work. And an in-studio first, Carsey performs her new song, Jacket. She's also the creator of The Effing Truth, a super fun sex-positive card game we play during the show and we get real and intimate. We also cover how to put your shame game to rest so you can have better sex, tips for a successful open marriage, and moving past that awkwardness when you're having sex with a new partner. All this and more. Thanks for listening. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. You know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com, where you can easily listen to all of our podcasts. You can also download them, like, everywhere now. You got them on Google Play, SoundCloud, Spotify. What's the latest one? Oh, iHeartRadio. So thank you, everyone, for checking them out and reviewing them. And also, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, it's all at Sex with Emily. And we're actually, this today's a very special show. There's some firsts on the show today, which I'm very excited about. And we're going to be doing an Instagram live of it and have a video. And I just love hearing from all of you. Happy October, you guys. I know that October is all about the build up towards Halloween. And you're probably already planning your costume and experiencing Halloween all month long because why not? And so we're going to do a special contest this month because I love giving you guys some amazing things that will help your relationships and your sex life. So for October giveaway, I want to know your best tricks or treats. So for example, you can let me know you've got this sexy trick that this trick works every time in the bedroom. It's your best sex move. It works for you. Maybe it's a masturbation sexy trick or with your partner. And then you're also, you can let me know about a treat. Is there any like bedroom accoutrements or toys or lingerie that's like your favorite sex treat? So just email us feedback at sexwithelmy.com. We'll be picking some winners and we'll be publishing it on our site and just make sure that you email us by November 1st. Feedback at sexwithelmy.com with the subject Halloween in the title. I'm really excited for you guys to meet Carsey Blanton. She's a cool chick. I'm so excited. We just met in person. I know. I'm so, thank you (laughs) for for stopping your busy life right now to come here for an hour or two, right? Oh my gosh. It is my pleasure. What's going on? You've been on the road. You're traveling. Yep. Yep. On the road, doing a tour of the West Coast, and then doing a bunch of publicity stuff in between for this game I invented. So I've got the music and the game, and it's all just happening all at once. Yeah. Okay. So Carsey has sexy music. (laughs) and a sexy game that we're going to be playing on the show, which you're going to learn a lot probably about me and a lot more about me, believe it or not, that you've ever learned about my sex life with this game. And um, and some of my team members are going to be on here and Carsey as well. And we're going to have you sing a song and stuff. So Carsey, you said you travel a lot Mm -hmm. and you came here for the day, which I love. (laughs) And I've been traveling a lot and sometimes I forget to eat. Yes. Has that ever happened to you? It does. You get snacks and Either stuff. Either I forget you... or I don't, I feel like I don't have time and then I end up buying like $20 like sandwich at the airport. Exactly. <laughs> 
airport food. Have you ever bought airport Ugh. sushi? That's just never. I literally bought it today. <laughs> you did? I ate it for breakfast. Okay. And I regretted it the whole time. Exactly. <laughs> I've done that as well. And I and I just got back from Hawaii. I was on this retreat. I came back. And luckily now I've discovered Thrive. Have you heard of Thrive Market? I have heard of Thrive Market. Okay. It's kind of like all the, I mean, I hope it's all the rage right now. Oh, I feel yeah. like people keep saying, I've heard of it. Everyone's talking about yeah, it. Yeah. It's great. And um, so they're amazing. I'm completely obsessed with them. I'm going to tell you more about them in a little bit. But, and I discovered a new life hack. Like, I Ooh. knew that I love them because they deliver, like, you said you like these bunnies. I love cheddar bunnies. She, you're like, you got the cheddar bunnies. <laughs> yeah. I, and we always have <laughs> snacks in the office. I'm not hangry anymore. Um, but I'm going to tell you some more things about it when we, um, in a little bit. Can't wait. I know. Okay. So, me neither. So, Carsey, and feel free to dig into the, the, the bunnies or the ginger snaps. <laughs> I'm Get such a Get some crunching free, on the mic. Exactly. It's a good, we don't mind good that. You guys, because we're so real and authentic. <laughs> right? So, we don't care about that. Okay, Carsey, I find you fascinating. Oh, I find you fascinating. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, look at this, a mutual fascination society. Yes. But we've been, you know, reading your blogs and listening to your music and stuff. So tell me tell me how you got into this world of all the things that you're doing. Great parents. Gosh. Where'd you grow up? Really cool parents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As I was mentioning earlier, my dad is a therapist who wrote a book called Radical Honesty. So yeah. I know some of your listeners might be familiar with it. So um, he's into like open communication and... Lots of talk about sex in my household growing up, like maybe too much, not, not really. <laughs> really? Um, but so I, you know, I grew up being really uh, comfortable with talking about subjects that are often taboo, and I think that informs my songwriting, and it also informs all of my many like side projects, uh, including this game that I made up called the Effing Truth. Yeah, we're gonna get into the game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm excited to play that. I actually played it with my staff. Yes, we were just testing it out, and it was like. I learned so much about my staff that I'd never, they've been working, Jamie's been working with me for over two years and then I was saying things and we had the great conversation. So that is, is very interesting. You're Amazing. Like, I, and I love that it opens up a dialogue, which we're going to get into that. A lot of times people email me, they're like, how do we talk to our kids about sex? How do we raise them in a home where they feel comfortable about sex? And, you know, I, I feel like that a lot of kids, it's hard for them to hear their parents talk about sex. They're like, kids' parents are like, am I failing him? What do I do? And I think we just don't really want to hear it from our mm-hmm. parents, but yet the schools are failing us. What was that like growing up in your household? Well, it was funny. I mean, my household was pretty unusual in a lot of ways. One of them being it was it was like a retreat center for my dad's workshops that he would that he leads. He leads group therapy workshops still. Wow. He's in his 70s now. Wow. Um, so he led these radical honesty workshops where all these people would get together and talk about their lives and, you know, be kind of brutally honest with each other. Wow. Were um, you there, like, playing I blocks or something? Literally, and like, yes. Whoa, I was, like, like, playing Legos in the room while people would be, like, crying and talking about their childhoods and stuff. And so I think that had pros and cons. But one of the pros was that I don't get easily spooked by people bringing up subjects that are sometimes uncomfortable. So, you know, things that are taboo for other people feel easy to talk about for me because I think I got it. I got all of my nervousness, like, burnt off at a young age. Well, that's great because a lot of us do just don't learn how to confront, how to communicate. I mean, yeah. it can be so stifling for a lot of people. So if you've got an issue with someone, not even just sex, but you're just like, hey, let's talk about this problem. Like yes. You could even confront me after the show and it wouldn't stress you out. You'd be like, Emily, something came up in the middle of the show. I want to talk to you about it. You know, that really is a good skill to have. Yeah, yeah. You know? Truly. I mean, more or less. I, I, I have nervousness about stuff like that too. But I do think, especially like I, I'm maybe more comfortable confronting people, but even more than that, I'm really comfortable um, like learning intimate details about people's lives and sharing intimate details about my life like that doesn't even feel like a confrontation to me that just feels like oh everybody's kind of doing the same right. stuff so yeah. we might as well be open about it so I think that's that's an approach that I've taken in a lot of different areas of my life like like normalizing yeah like sex or just not even having yes. secrets really being yeah. authentically being yourself yes which is what you talk about a lot in yeah. your songs and your blogs and I like the way you wrote about women who like sex oh yeah thought you might like that yeah, one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Not just because there was sex in the title. I read other <laughs> things as well, but I think you have a lot of great advice there for women because I think it just is so confusing. Growing up, I mean, I don't think a lot has changed, like even since I was a kid, about women understanding that sex is about pleasure mm-hmm. and, and and their bodies and taking the time to figure all that out. So we talk about that a lot of the show. So I like that you said uh, women like sex just as much as men, because I still think this comes up that women assume, or a lot of women, women and men assume that men are the ones who want sex all the time, right. and that women do, and that women should be ashamed for it. Right. 
And it doesn't mean that they necessarily want to have sex with you just because they would like sex. Right. So be comfortable talking about sex. So how did you come up with this? Is this in your life where you're like always saying like, I love sex? And the guys were like, hey, baby. You're like, no, not with you. Kind of. I mean, it's funny because that blog post came out a few years ago and that was kind of my first, it was my first really direct acknowledgement of the stuff that I had been implying in my songwriting for a long time. So I had a lot of songs that sort of were a little bit sexy or talked about sex a little bit in a, you know, as innuendo. And that was the first time I was like, hey, everybody, like, let's talk about what's really going on here, which is I'm a young woman who's expressing my sexuality. And I get a few different responses. And some of the really common ones are older women will often say that they're worried about me. Like, oh, is that safe? Or like, oh, but you don't, you know, travel alone and go to men's houses right. or whatever. <laughs> or like, but when are you going to stop doing that? You know, all right. that, that variety of things that's like, I'm worried for your safety. Right. And then the other reaction often from men is like, oh, you like sex? Well, probably we should have sex then. Right. Which is like, it's not like it's wrong to think that. It's just that there's sort of this this sense of like, if a woman acknowledges that she likes sex, then like all etiquette goes out the window. Exactly. Like she must be a nymphomaniac. She's going to have sex with anybody. Yeah. Um, I, I live with that. Yes. I'm sure you do. Yes. I'm and sure you your probably- email are <laughs> a lot of them assume yeah that. no exactly people are like must they must assume because why they'd be like why would you get into this career like a right. chef probably loves to eat and right. somebody who you know but that's a perfect example because a chef loves to eat really good food right, right? <laughs> exactly <laughs> you're not gonna be like oh you're a chef i'm gonna get you a hamburger at mcdonald's you're gonna eat it good point it's gonna be great i love it right that's true. so right. i think that the more you focus on something especially like a sensual thing the more you, it sort of deepens your awareness of it. And so on the contrary, I think people who really love sex and think about it a lot probably have a higher standard. Right, exactly. <laughs> than, than people who don't. I'm not going to take that run of, run of the mill Tinder hookup. <laughs> right. At least not tonight. Every once in a while you want to drive through a burger. Oh, sure. But, you sure. know, not a lot. <laughs> um, but then, only when you want one. That's right, the exactly. thing. Right. I'm in charge. <laughs> I'm, I'm in charge of it. Okay. I want to talk about um, your songs and your performing right now. So you're right. running around and you're here, you're in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And you play, you play music. Tell me about your music. So like my day job, <laughs> my real job is that I'm a performing songwriter. So I'm based in New Orleans. I live in New Orleans, but I travel all over oh. the country and sometimes other countries um, playing shows for people. My music definitely also covers a lot of the same territory as the blog. So I talk a lot about sex and, and a lot of it is like, you know, a lot of songs are about sex yes. for all of history. Like maybe all songs are about sex in like a mystical way. A lot of my music references sex uh, indirectly, but also a lot of my more recent music. I put out a record called So Ferocious last year and that's more specifically about uh, what it's like to live as a woman who not just enjoys sex but I feel like uh, it's a big part of my creative process and so it's something I value in my life and that I look for and all that so tell me how that sex is a part of your creative process give me oh my gosh Emily tell me everything go it's just crazy I so you know all different people are creative and people create in lots of different ways so the way that I create is often I have like a big exciting feeling And for me, the way that comes out is in song lyrics. So I want to write songs when I have a big, exciting feeling. Okay. And since I first started writing when I was like 14 or 15. Writing um, music? Writing music, Mm -hmm. writing songs. The major source of inspiration has been like romance and sex and sort of the erotic spark between me and other people. And I think that is true for a lot of musicians, but it's sort of like our dirty little secret. <laughs> right. No, it's true. But you're also writing a lot of people about heartache and angst and yeah, stuff. And, right, right. And, like, and it's all sort of interrelated. So some it of it is like heartbreak and some of it is the like, other. right. But a lot of it is just like, here's a hot guy. I really want to bone him. You know what I mean? And then you go home and you start writing. <laughs> and I write about it. Yeah. And so, yeah. like my first song that I finished when I was 14 was basically that. But it was like my 14 year old version of that. Oh my God. I bet you it's still really, do you ever listen to it? Do you have Sometimes. it still? Sometimes. It's a little cringy for me now, but, but not much has changed in terms of like my process, which is like, usually I meet a boy, we have a conversation, there's some spark, and then I just get full of this energy. Wow. And that energy that for sexual me. sexual energy. Yeah. Attraction. For me, that sexual energy translates into music really well god so So you just you never get like writer's block because you're like let me just go out and yeah i get get it a lot yeah i get it a lot less now than i used to when i was more uh concerned with like being like having good social conventions or having good reputation yeah you let out the window which of your first song about like (laughs) what you know i mean 
What was the one that you, what was the song that you like, what were some lines in the song? You're like, okay, now I just have to be out there. The very, wait, the very first one yeah. you sang? What was it? Or not even when you were 14, that? but the one that you were like, oh, now that I've said it, it sounds like it was more recently maybe. Yeah, I think that the the more recent stuff has definitely been more like, okay, the cat's out of the bag now. So like I have a song called Vim and Vigor yeah, from my last record. Yeah, I love record. that one. Oh, cool. We listen. Which is like, it starts out, I know I got a dirty mind, it's in the gutter all the time. I don't believe that it's a crime. I consider it a service. So that was like, the whole idea to me was like, all right, enough with the shame and the like, you're dirty and you're bad and all that. And so I kind of flipped it in that song. And I think a few songs on the record are about flipping that and reflecting it back to society and saying like, I'm just doing what's fun and feels good. And you're the ones piling a bunch of shame on it. So like, think about that what does that mean for you exactly that's what the (laughs) message that so many young women all women still need to learn yeah right i mean yeah and now i'm just so much more in in a space of like just being celebratory about it it's so fun it's so fun and it's so nice that we have like birth control and women's rights and we can vote and own property and we don't have to worry about all that bullshit right just condoms we need to definitely wear condoms (laughs) we do we got that but we can buy those we can buy condoms (laughs) I have condoms if you want them. Oh, thank you. I have so many things. We'll give you some toys before you leave. Great. And uh, so you, okay, so are you in a relationship now? Yes. Okay. I'm married. You're married. In fact. Right. Yeah. Okay. You're married. Yes. How's that going? How long have you been married? It's great. We have been married for four years, but together for a little over 10. Okay. Actually, almost 11, I think. Um, and we are in an open marriage. Okay. So I'm married and I also get- Has it always been open? Pretty much, yeah. It's been open from the beginning. We've had a few phases of monogamy because whatever, for some reason or other, we felt like it was too much you had to the deal flu with for a few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I don't have time. Yeah. So, so then you okay? So, so how did that happen? Did you both had you both been in open relationships before? No, actually, it was weird. We we both kind of had come to it on our own, and then we had a one night stand, and then the next morning, I had just like I had. What do you mean you of, both had? A one night stand. Oh no, we both had come to the idea of non monogamy, okay. like on our own. Okay. And so then we slept together, and in the morning we woke up, and I was like, that was really fun. I really like you, but I, I just have become single recently, and I really like being single, and actually I'm not really sure if monogamy is a good idea anyway. So what do you say we just like don't do the whole monogamy thing? And I kind of meant it like for now because we just slept together for right. the first time. And he was like, great, I love it. And so that was like the initial condition of the relationship. And it just worked. Like for us, it just worked. Right. Not that it wasn't, you know, we had some jealousy and some stuff to work of out. But it and was it still like, happens, right? The jealousy. Oh yeah. It does. But for me, it's like the trade off is it's really a question of whether it's scarier for you to feel bored and trapped or to feel jealous right. and afraid. Right. I love when you say, um, and you're, you're another blog, how not to be a nice girl, that if you have a problem with the way you look, find a bigger problem. Like, <laughs> So I want to talk about women and how hard we are on ourselves, our looks, and our bodies, and where you kind of got all of that from and what you, yeah. the kind of things that you talk about. I mean, I try to talk to women about confidence and believing in yourself and, and body image and so... But I just like the way you framed it because it's mm. kind of like if you th- you could spend so much time thinking about that stuff. Yeah. Or you could spend time thinking about things that are actually really right. interesting, change the world. <laughs> right. And grow yeah. yourself, grow your brain. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I often, the like thought experiment I do with myself sometimes is when I start to get hung up on how I look and I think like, oh, whatever, I'm, my skin isn't good right now or, you know, I've gained some weight or whatever it is. I try to like put myself somewhere else in the world, in my mind, like, well... If I was a Syrian refugee, would I be worried about my breakout that I'm having right now? And it's like, it's a weird trick because it's kind of dark, but man, does it ever work? Because you like, it, it makes you, it's not just like that it shames you into not thinking about it. It's that it just puts your problems in it perspective. Does, if your really biggest does. problem is your acne, you are doing great. Exactly. In the scheme of humanity, you are winning the game. <laughs> right. It's true. I think that it's just really important, I think, yeah. for women. But it's so hard because we just are being fed this, this you know, all this pressure all the time and it gets really exhausting. It's exhausting to be trying to deflect the cultural expectations of yourself constantly. Exactly. Constantly, constantly, every day. Exactly. So you know you're a performer (laughs) and you're out there and I'm out there. I'm like, oh, it matters, you know, like what you look like. But then also, you know, just having that, having that balance. Yes. That we all need. I would love to get into your game a little bit. So tell me about how you came up with the game and like what. Sure. Yeah. I think it's because I'm always saying couples should... That we're going to get some emails shortly. We're going to mm-hmm. answer some questions. But my listeners are always 
asking me like, I don't know how to talk about things or how do I bring this up with my partner? How do I know what they want? And I've always thought like, and there are some games out there mm-hmm. in the world, but I just think that this is such a creative way if people aren't comfortable, like play a game. Yeah, yeah. How, so. yeah. Well, the way I came up with it was kind of a combination of things, but one of them is that, so you have your four questions or five questions oh, I'm that you do often that. ask. Yes, I'm going to ask you those. So I also have a, sort of a collection of questions that I've had for a long time. Like, I don't think I could come up with them off the top of my oh, head. You can Maybe ask me some one of them. Okay. But like questions, a lot of long car rides because I tour. And so I'm often touring with my band or with another band. And so it's like, you know, we have to drive from like Chicago to whatever to philadelphia or something so it's like all right we have 16 hours in the car we know each other but do we know each other that well probably not so i have like a collection that i've had for a long time on my little notes on my phone of just questions that get people talking in a way that's like exciting and fun and a little edgy and scary so i had this collection and then the the idea for the format of the game that it was going to be kind of like bingo but a sexy version of bingo Mm -hmm. came up. And once that happened, it was like it all kind of clicked together. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I need to make a game using my questions. And then, you know, I could have a deck with me when I go on tour and I wouldn't have to, like, go into my notes on my phone. And then I could sell it and other people could play it. (laughs) So it was like the the source was just this uh, this feeling of like it's really fun to ask people questions that are related to a thing they think about. But maybe they haven't thought about that specific one before. Yeah. And I can tell you that it is true that people want to talk about this stuff. They do want to talk about sex and their desires and their relationships and their history, but they don't really know how. And there's still all that, still all that judgment and shame. And if I'm out there with this, what's going to happen to my job or if my boss sees it on my Facebook page. And it's like, you really just, it kind of opens it up and gives people the freedom to, and then you really just like connect with people and it's not dirty or wrong or shameful, which is what you're all about, what I'm all about with sex. And so it's funny when I was a kid and this is kind of when I kind of started, I always have loved asking a lot of questions Mm -hmm. and, and I've always been fascinated by relationships. I used to always ask people, they weren't like dirty, no, they weren't like as dirty as your eyes, like seven. <laughs> but I'd be like, how did you guys meet? Like if right. I met a couple, where did you guys meet? How did you do, you know, how did you, are you in love? Like I would always right. ask, I just found it love, fascinating. Yeah. I didn't know about sex yet. Yeah, and I think for me, I think we're kind of in the same business in a certain way in that for me, it's like there's the way people treat sex is like it's almost this like cultish thing where it's like oh you're into sex then you're like one of those people who's into sex and for me it's like no sex is a thing that all humans share it's like eating right Right. it's a physiological function and also it's part of our psychology and it's something that goes on for almost everybody Mm -hmm. and so to me it's like it could be this great connector rather than a divider where it's like either you're in the sex camp or you're in the normal people camp so a game like the effing truth for me is really about getting everybody into the same camp, which is like, let's just be honest about this thing that we're all doing and all thinking about. Right. It's like the elephant in the country. Right. In the world. It's like, right? (laughs) It's the the elephant in the the world. It's the elephant in the world. It's like, we're all having sex. We're all doing it. Yeah. And we're spending more money on it. You know, billion dollar industry, like sex, porn, all this stuff. But yet... You're we're still not comfortable about. talking about it. Like it's just, it's just so bizarre to me, and I, I do feel like that's why I do my show as well. People make it to make it comfortable to talk about and have it be an authentic experience for people without shame. But you know, and I do think it's getting a lot better than it used to be. Yeah. And so I think that with your music, what are the different reactions in different parts of the country? Like, because you have a beautiful voice. Thank you. Sing right, a little, right, right. Sing a little bit more for me. I love when you did that. I got so. If you want, no pressure. Sure. Okay. Oh, oh my good. gosh. Uh, well, so let's see. What other songs? I have one called Ravenous that's like more like the story of my life. So it's got a line that's like, well, actually the chorus is, they all said that it was bad, but it felt good. It's like about how society is saying this is a bad thing. It's right. a bad thing. But then when you're inside your body being a person, you're like, how can this be a bad thing when it that, feels so good? This is the and, conundrum. Yeah, I think that for, most- that for me was the big cognitive dissonance from when I was like 10 or 11 when I first started masturbating. I was like, wait a second. And my parents obviously were, you know, they were like, cool, way more open. But right. it was like I was still getting the messaging from society that everybody gets. And I just remember being like, why is this a secret, private, dirty thing when it feels great? Like, what could be dirty about that? Right. Um, and so I think that's a theme in a lot of my work. And well, first of all, a lot of people aren't lyrics people. So a lot of people totally miss it. They do. <laughs> right. And I'm not a focus person either. <laughs> so sometimes I could see that I would be like, oh, I love her voice. I love it. What'd she talk about? Yeah, right, right, I get right. it. But right. some people are. They have to hear it. I get it. And then some people are. And so it's like, uh, depending you know, on the show and the night and what the audience is like, whether they're drinking, all that stuff, sometimes people get it and sometimes people don't. And when people get it, it's like, 
I often will see a thing happen in the room where at first people get kind of nervous, like, oh, she means sex. <laughs> right. And then somebody will laugh a little bit, and then you can sort of feel it ripple through the room. People are like, oh, cool. She's like singing about <laughs> yeah. sex, and it's like fun, and it's not so scary. Yeah. And I love that reaction. So that's always what I'm going for is to get everybody into like a lighthearted uh, and that's what you atmosphere do. Atmosphere right, about exactly. sexuality. I think yeah. you do a great job with your music, and everyone can check it out. It's Carsey Blanton, C A R S I E Blanton, B L A N T O N. It's Twitter and Instagram, Carsey Blanton fans on Facebook, and CarseyBlanton.com. That's right. Go check out your videos and see how adorable and smart you are in your music and listen to you. And then we're going to have a song that we're going to do that people can find on our site, and all your info will be there as well. This is my dog, Henry, but it's not about him. Okay. <laughs> Carsey Blanton's here. I've got my whole team here. Jamie, Ken, Shannon, Lark, Mikey. So, we are playing a game. So, Carsey's a very talented woman. She is a, a singer, a songwriter, and wrote a game called The Effing the Truth. Truth. So, we are playing it right now, <laughs> and... It's pretty amazing. You guys are going to love this. We're going to learn a lot about each other. We're going to bond, and you're going to want to get this game. Okay. <laughs> Should we launch into the game? Yes. Okay. okay. Carsey Blanton, take it away. All right. Okay, so the effing truth. So I'm going to explain how to play it. Everybody gets their own board. The effing board, it says. Effing board. <laughs> yeah. effing board. I love <laughs> it. It's fantastic. <laughs> and this is a lot like a bingo board, so it's got a bunch of numbers on it. And then it also had these special story spots, as you can see. So the idea is we have this... Uh, deck of cards, and most of the cards have a number on them and two questions. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to take turns drawing cards, and then you're going to read both questions and decide which one you most want to ask the group. And so you ask uh, one of the two questions. Okay. And then anybody who can answer yes to that question can then cross off the corresponding number on their board. Okay. So not all boards have all the numbers. That's the disclaimer. Okay. Um, and then the only extra thing is there are these story cards in here somewhere. There's one. And those just have a prompt instead of a question. So it'll say, like, talk about blah, 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 blah. And then the deal with that is anyone who tells a story about that thing can cross off one of their story oh, spots. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. So then uh, important thing to say before we start, I have this card in here that says, what is sex? Oh, uh, yeah. It says, it's trying to it <laughs> <laughs> um, I say, it's playful and fun. It's raunchy and radical. It's loving and magical. It's silly and sweet. It's all those things. Mm, but beautiful. for the purposes of this game, uh, sex does have to be consensual, does not have to include an orgasm or be penetrative. So a lot of the cards say, have you ever had like sex, it. blah, blah, blah. And so now you know that right, includes have, any kind of sex. Right. Got it. Oh, yeah. like We're not going to actually be having sex. Oh, yeah. And sorry. we're not going to have sex during the game. I'm out. Sorry. <laughs> we would have we to pause the, the game. So, and I just think it'd be fun. To, uh, we played a little bit yesterday. We were like, oh, my God, I learned a lot about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, good. Way more than I know. So you can't <laughs> get anything. I think it's a great conversation sure. piece. And I think that, yeah, play with your friends. Yeah. Kids, well, let's lunch. Let's, let's let's jump it. in. You'll know what the questions are like. So I'll start. Okay. So this is number 24. So everybody look at your board. Also, the lowest numbers on the left, highest are on the right. That'll oh. make it easier to find. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. So number 24, have you ever had consensual sex with someone you were not attracted to? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Same. Yes. Okay. Yes, I also so that, Okay, good. So we just, I don't so know, So you cross, cross okay. off if you have it. Yep. And if you don't. Okay, let's keep going. That was fun. Then oh. We move on and now it's okay. your turn. I love how we were all like, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. The number is 50. So if you have 50, you get to cross it off. Oh, I have it. Okay, um, kept a list or other record of people you've had sex with. Oh my God, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. It's been you a long time. I know. <laughs> I've lost track by this point, but yes. I have not lost point. track. I am like really serious about it. I have really? a I have wow. a spreadsheet. Do you like an homage? Oh my God, to that? That's I fantastic. Love that. <laughs> Only because I have like notes in case I need to remember later. Like in case I want to uh, write yeah. a memoir of everyone I ever oh, had sex with. Oh, that's good for your music. Oh, yeah, there you go. I love it. Well, I never <laughs> kept like a detailed list, but I want to. I have a good list story, even though this isn't part of the game. No, but go for it. It is part of the game. It actually. is. See, there you go. <laughs> there you go. So it's it's a nice it's conversation. Traumatic, but when I was like 25 years old, my boyfriend at the time, we were together for a while. And I was at his house, and I was looking for a piece of paper. I was not snooping. Don't judge me, but I went to his drawer, <laughs> and he had a notebook that I pulled out. It was like right there on top, and I pulled it out, and it was like a list yep. of all who he slept with. In sequential order, I was not the last name on his list. And the two names following, one was his boss, 
Ooh, he had the job. Oh, so, God. And Casual. one was like, he's missing. so he had to do it for. So I was like, to keep oh. his job. Well, maybe. No. But he, he didn't have to sleep with the massage therapist. <laughs> no, you didn't have to do so that. So keep your list private now. I don't yeah. know. Anyway, that's my guess. See, look at this. Did you <laughs> know, know, didn't this? know that? <laughs> right. Okay. Keep okay. going. So, okay. guys, we have a story card. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. oh okay. Yes. Okay. Talk about something that turns you on, but it's embarrassing to admit. There's a lot of stuff I wouldn't be embarrassed about normally, but since we're like live on the internet and we're on not. a podcast and people are going to hear this, I might actually be embarrassed with some things. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> I'll start because okay. I have oh, one. Good. I have one in the hopper. So this is embarrassing from a like, I'm an empowered woman feminist person perspective. I watch a lot of porn that's like, not like rape porn, but like groping on public buses and like sleep like this the girl's supposed to be asleep that kind of stuff oh mm-hmm. right i watch that kind of porn and it totally turns me on and every time i watch it i like you know get off and then i'm like oh what am i oh, you feel supporting the shame. yeah right i do supporting mm-hmm. that porn. i understand like i'm supporting that porn and i shouldn't be so right. i try to now i've been trying to like go to paid websites that have that kind of stuff that's so good. i know that somebody that's actually good to there's some there money, you go. Like yeah. making that's, that's money good. it's consensual, yeah. consensual porn i don't it's a hard one for me, like, that I'm embarrassed. I mean, I guess it's not really embarrassing. I guess it's kind of weird, but I don't feel like I'd be alone in this. Maybe at this table I would be, but not in the grand scheme of the world. I am, like, super turned on. I think the cartoon Archer, I think he's so hot. And, like, it <gasps> turns great. me on. And it's, like, a complete cartoon. And, That's like, awesome. the actual guy that does the voice is not necessarily <laughs> attractive. But when he's Archer, it's just like, oh, damn. Oh, man, I love it. That's one of one. my first crushes was the the male love interest in Anastasia, the animated <gasps> oh, film. Oh, I love him, love too. Love Anastasia. Right? <laughs> yes. I guess I like cartoons His voice was John Cusack, though, who I also was into when he was... Yeah. Cross off your story spot, yeah. spot if oh, you Oh, story spot. Story. Oh, yeah, I want to mention, this is a good time to mention, that this the deck is formulated so that any group of people, no matter their sexual orientation or sexual history or gender identity, can play the game. So, so there's no references to male, female, straight, True. gay, anywhere in the deck. I love it. Whose turn? It's your turn. Hello. Mm. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> I think. Well. No. Is Can it I a story or one? Sure. It would be good oh. if we were at a party. Well, well now you have us on the I know. Everyone on the podcast okay. is going to be like, Had a sex dream or fantasy about someone who was in this room. But I just thought that'd be fun like if you were in a group of okay. friends or something. Well, you guys work together. This is the best possible. Okay, fine. Have you had a sex dream or fantasy about someone who was in this room? Well, first, what's the number? Or is it a story? Oh, 39. Sorry, number 39. 39. I don't have it, but I'm going to answer it because it's not a real, it's not a, it's not a yes, but it's def- it's not a no. Okay. I've definitely, like, thought of Emily while I was having sex. Like, nice. oh. something happened Aww. that I was just like, oh, I gotta tell Emily about this tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so that I'm definitely, great. or she's, or be like, oh, wait, 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 Emily was telling me, like, do this. So, like, I've definitely, con- I've definitely conjured it up during that time. So it's not Aww. necessarily oh, yes, but it's also not no. That makes me feel good. I wouldn't that's be surprised great. if eventually I'm starting to do that. <laughs> yeah. as well. I've been here a month, so I'm like, give me, I like, another that. month, I'm sure I will be too. Aww. I love that. that and I good. love that question. It is really good if you're at a party with your friends. Oh, yeah. It's like, all it's right, good. let's hear right, it. Who's here? Yeah. Who did it? I think that's a great question. <laughs> that was a little taste F of the truth. game, the effing this truth. This is fun. Everyone should get it. And if you, if you play all the way to the end, it takes like between 30 minutes and an hour to finish a game. And you're trying to get a row of five. And then when you do, that's how you determine who is the fuckingest. Or the effingest. The effingest, the effingest. I love it. Yeah. This so I actually want for the Kickstarter, one of the rewards is like a, a little gift pack that com- that goes with the game. And one of the things is going to be like a banner that says, I'm the effingest. Oh, my yes. God. Yes. <laughs> How do they spell the effing truth? I love it. Oh, yeah. To go to the website. The website is T-H-E-F-I-N-G truth. The effing truth. Okay, cool. Com. This is fun. And that'll be really fun. But we're going to so finish the fun. podcast. Okay, so now we're on to emails. Carsey, you're going to help me out here. I'm excited. If you have a question you want me to answer on the show, I love that. You can text me your question. Just text Ask Emily one word to 797979. So that's the number you put into your phone, 797979. Ask Emily. You can also submit the question from our website, sexwithemily.com, via the Ask Emily tab. And as always, include information that will help me help you, your gender, your age, where you live, and how you listen. Oh my gosh, I love the texting to the number. Right? That's it's so, so cool. I'm going to be cool. doing that all the time from yeah. like someone's bed. I'm going to be like, Emily, what Really? A- you could do that for <laughs> sure. Good. You could be like, I got to use the bathroom really quick. Exactly. I, w- I, will, I will answer your question. <laughs> okay. Dear Emily, I'm new to sex. I lost my virginity at 18 and now I'm 19. 
What could I do to be more confident and comfortable with my body? Also, what are some tips and tricks to reduce the awkwardness with my fiance since sex is still new to me? Thank you, Cheyenne, 19, Minnesota. Oh, honey. It's a lot, yeah. Oh, honey. Engaged. Yes, engaged and, and 19. Yes. There's okay. a lot more work to do here. There's a lot to do. My first response would be masturbate, which I know you're a big proponent Huge of that fan. as well. Yeah. Love masturbating. Think everyone should do it more, especially women. I just feel like knowing how to pleasure yourself is so convenient for so many reasons. One is it makes you more comfortable with your uh, body's response, it makes you more familiar with it. And another one is that I think being able to like touch yourself while you're having sex and make sure that you get to feel what you want to feel and that you get to come to orgasm is so fun and so hot yeah, for your partner. Because you have to touch your clit, right? You're saying touch your clitoris, touch, touch your, your clit you need. while you're having penetrative yes. sex. And I think that most partners react to that with in a positive way. With glee. With glee. <laughs> <laughs> right. Most partners are like, I'm down, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. You please yourself. Yeah. And especially if, you know, if you're engaged, you should be able to have a conversation about it and say, honey, I've been working on this thing. They told me on the podcast I yeah. should masturbate more. So, you know, I'm going to probably touch my clit while we have sex. Exactly. And that's just because I want to have the most fun I can have. We can have all that fun together. Right? right. Exactly. And also, Cheyenne, just know that it's new, right? Sex is a whole new thing for you. And so it's okay to feel a little awkward and uncomfortable. Yeah. And sex, it takes time. You know, we don't yeah. become experts at anything overnight. Practice, but practice, you gotta practice, practice. You got to keep having sex and touching your body and talking to your partner about it. And I think that starting now, like, yep. like right away, and working on loving yourself and loving your body and having more confidence, I think that the more, first of all, the more that you understand your body and how to touch yourself, what makes you feel good, that will help you become more confident. But it also just the more sex that you have and the more that you talk to your partner, so you're not like in your head guessing, was I good? Was I awkward? Was I weird? But if you guys can kind of build this really safe, nurturing, open environment together, like you won't have an awkward feeling with totally. someone you're, you're planning on spending the rest of your life with. And you know what? It's funny because I, I say this to people who ask me about like performing and writing songs. There's a thing where if you practice something a lot, it just burns off your self-consciousness. You just, you're self-conscious, you're self-conscious, you're self-conscious. And then like the thousandth time you do it, you just don't have the energy it's to true. be nervous anymore. And so you just break through it. It's so true. there is an element of like, you just keep having practice. sex, keep bringing up things you want to talk about. And eventually, like, your body will not respond to a sexual situation with, like, this feeling of, oh, am I doing this right? How do I look? Did I do a good job? All that stuff That's will a really just, good point. It'll go, eventually get over it. That's true. You're absolutely right. These insecurities and all this stuff, just, um, yeah, communicate. And, um, yeah, you're right. It'll go away. You'll be, you'll be <laughs> fine, Cheyenne. Thank you for emailing me. And, and think um, of all the sex ahead of you. You're 19. I know. You can have so much sex. Exactly. And make sure you guys are you. sexually compatible before you walk down the aisle right now, too. Yeah. I'm just going to say that. That's what I'm going to say about that. Okay, let's, um, let's go to the next email. Hi, Emily. I'm a big fan of your podcast and all the helpful information and advice that you give to listeners. My boyfriend and I have been together for almost two years. He treats me well and normally extremely caring. He's an athlete and very conscious of his body and diet and staying in shape, which is great for him. The problem is he's constantly telling me that I should work out and eat better for my health. I can't help but take it personally. I'm 5'8", 130 pounds. Normally, this is irrelevant. I want to emphasize that I'm very much in the healthy weight zone, which is why his comments hurt my feelings. I've never dated someone so concerned with my diet and exercise, and it's making me very self-conscious, and I'm beginning to lose interest in sex, which is rare for me. At first, his comments weren't a huge issue because I'm normally very confident in my body and sexuality. I did ask what he wanted me to do to make sex more enjoyable for him, his response, work out more. Mm. I was expecting something more along the lines of lingerie or a threesome. <laughs> this has made me incredibly uncomfortable when we have sex. Am I ever reacting to these comments and just need to stop being so sensitive? I'm looking forward to hearing your advice and would love some brutally honest answers. Thanks, Lexi, 25 Austin. Mm. Lexi, mm. you've come mm. to the right place for brutal honesty <laughs> because if you could see the two of us like shaking our heads here, uh, oh, you can go first. Oh my gosh. Well, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to open with is I had a boyfriend like that too who was really athletic and worked out all the time and lifted weights and, and rode his bike everywhere and he was like, you should, you should, you should. And I solved it. You know how I solved the problem? <laughs> what? I dumped him. <laughs> it was the best decision I ever made. Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm telling you, okay, so here's my problems with this. I Good for you, first of all, because I would do the same thing, and this is so insidious. 
she might not realize it. Here's the thing, uh, Lexi, these comments that he's making, you're sweet, you love him, he's been great. And then I can see you in your head going, well, maybe I should. You know what I love about you, Lexi? You're not even saying I should work on my ear. Like, I'm normal and healthy. And now he's messing with your self-esteem and confidence. So this is why I don't like this at all. And this is about him. This is about what he values as like, he's obsessed with himself and working out and his body. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not your interest. Yeah. Like, that's not what you're into. And he can't put that on you and as a result, especially like being a woman, like you're going to start to, like you said, you don't, it's having the opposite effect. It's lowering your self-esteem. You're not going to want sex anymore. And it's I don't no think it's very anyone. kind. Yeah. He's not even answering your sex questions. He's like, just work out more. And yeah. it's just, it's very yeah. superficial to me. I agree. And, and I also think like the, that's the brutally honest answer is like dump the guy who's being a jerk. And I feel like the, the kinder or more, maybe more the kinder to him as a person, like we don't know the guy. The, the more positive outlook is this guy has a really strong interest in this thing. You don't share an interest in that, right? right? So it's a compatibility issue. Like if his number one interest is working out and he really needs that to be something you do together and that's the kind of thing he would connect with you on that makes him sexually interested in you, then he needs to find another partner. Yeah, right? that, that, that is a great that is a really good point because I don't think, Lexi, you're 25 years old. I'm going to assume that he's around your age and, and this is what he's really into now. I really don't think that this kind of thing is going to change. It's not just like he said it once. Because I hear some people, like my boyfriend told me this once. Is it true? But the fact that he's saying he said it several times that he, you ask him about sex, he says, work out more. You're like, what do you want for dinner? He's like, work out more. You know, what movie do you want to see? Work out more. I mean, it sounds like it's like his yeah. theme, right? <laughs> right? And so I agree with you that it might be a compatibility thing. And um, I just don't like that you're uncomfortable. You said, are you overreacting to these comments? No. You're and underreacting. I, don't, you're un- I think you're, you're, under, you're very, like, you're, you're sweet and you're kind and you care about your partner. I don't think that you, I think you got to stand up for yourself yeah. and what you believe in and what you want. And you're going to work out when you want to work out. No one says you have to work out. Um, what I want you to do is to have incredible sex with someone who appreciates you for who you are and all the things that interest you and what you love about yourself and gets excited, Lexi, about who you are as a person right now. I think that a lot of people get into relationships thinking they can change someone. No matter what age you are, what point in your life, nobody changes unless they want to change. Nobody. That will not happen. And I think there's people who even get married and they're like, oh, well, once we get married, mm-hmm. he'll stop running around or she'll, you know, she'll work less. That, that, no, it right. doesn't happen. No. So, so just know that this is how it is, Lexi. And um, the writing is on the wall here. So yes. you could, you know, let him know how you're feeling heartfelt and see what happens. But can I just add you. one thing? Please, <laughs> please, Carsey. I just want to add that like that thing is so insidious for women, especially because we're constantly getting these reflections from society about how we look. And so Lexi is 5'8 and 130 pounds, which is like, sounds like she's super fit and probably really yeah. conforms to standards of beauty. Exactly. But I also want to say no matter what your weight or size is, it's not your partner's decision to decide how your body's supposed to look. If they're with you and they don't feel attracted to you for whatever reason, that's their problem. That's something they need to handle. And it, it's not, it's, it's not unkind and it's insensitive for him to be putting that on you. So true. And it's Don't just take inappropriate. It on. It's inappropriate. And I think I love that you made this point. And I think that that a lot of women listening now should kind of take this on. If there's anything that your partner or that you're saying or society wants to change you, it's it's their problem. So yeah. much of the time, and we we take so much on because we're caretakers and we're pleasers. A lot of women, and just like do you like the more yeah. you can just be like this is who I am and stand up for it. That gets easier as yeah. well. And nobody got time for that. No, we got no time for that. Okay, and that's all we have time for on the show. Oh, this was really fun, by the way. Yay. Carsey Blanton, thank you so much. I, first, I have to ask you five questions. Oh, boy. Are you ready? <sighs> yeah. You got this, girl. Okay. Okay, here we go. What's your biggest turn on? Biggest, just one thing? One thing. <laughs> Probably humor and musical it. ability. That's okay. two things. Biggest turn off? I hate to say this because this is the worst thing to say to people who like want to be sexy but insecurity is my biggest turn off if somebody approaches me and they're like hmm, maybe we should have sex that's like really right really does not work for right. me right exactly. i hear you <laughs> um sexiest part of your partner's body sexiest <laughs> can i just say penis yeah you can say whatever you want cock i'm gonna say cock, cock. And say cock. love it <laughs> what's the one thing you wish you could tell your current and or all future partners about your body's needs i mean i feel like i've already told my current partner this but about I, future what do they need to know future i mean I, the one i would say is i am one of the women one of the majority of women who needs clitoral stimulation in addition to penetration mm-hmm. in order to have an orgasm so I usually do say that in my sexual encounters now, but it took me like, I don't know, <sighs> almost 30 years of having, not 30 years of having sex, 15 years of having sex right? to figure out I could just say that. And then they'd be like, 
Oh, cool. Okay. Right? Women, this is, okay. I hope that all the women there who are starting to have sex realize now that today is the day to, to, to ask Just for what you want. say it. Don't wait. Just say it. And do you use um, toys or do you use your fingers or? I use my hands. Your hands. I use my that hands. That works, yeah. Yep. Hands, loose. And it has it. to be my hands usually. I mean, yeah, it is you know. a rare partner you who can, it. especially if it's like a casual sex thing, it is a very rare partner who can get me off with their hands. If we're if we just started having sex, right? Because it's just can't I want a instrument. really specific thing. I get it, right? <laughs> yeah, we're all different, and I might be yeah. trying because the last girlfriend wanted right, to right, do right. it, and it makes it so much easier just to be like, we're doing this thing with our bodies. We want to feel good. This is what feels good to me. I'm going to use my hand, and like it's not an issue, right? Nothing to good. nothing just do to it. have to get over really. I love it. Those were great <laughs> answers. <laughs> So this is a brand new song, um, so it's not out on my record yet. This one, though, you can get access to through patreon.com. I have a site. I put all my demos on there, so there's a demo of that if you become a patron. Uh, The song is called Jacket, as in like a jacket, like a coat, but it's a double entendre. You'll get it. I wrote it about a boy that I thought was cute. Take a good long drive down the NJ Pike Thinking why you gotta be the type of boy I like And why you act so dumb with all the books you read Got a body like that and you're living in your head Make a quick pit stop at the Molly Pitcher You say you got a girl, but I don't see you with her You say you want a drink, but I want something stiffer You say I ought to keep it clean, I ain't a Swiffer I like your shirt, I like your jacket I like to think about you when I whack it It doesn't hurt, (laughs) there's nothing to it Call me when you had enough of thinking, baby, let's do it Let's do it Said I gotta feed a meter, but I'm gonna see you later In the bar you were chewing on a swizzle stick Said you look so good, you're about to make me sick So we tried to take a walk, but it was too much You only wanna talk, you know I'm gonna wanna touch We tried to have a chat, but it was too scary You're just a Democrat, I'm a revolutionary <laughs> I like your shirt, I like your jacket like to think about you when I whack it <laughs> Doesn't hurt, ain't nothing to it Call me when you had enough of thinking, baby, let Hey, Carsey Blanton, check her out um, at Carsey Blanton and check out her game, Effing Truth, your music. Yeah, CarseyBlanton.com. That's the big, the one-stop shop. Yeah, and we're going to have a video up on, I think, our site. Okay, thank you for being here. Thank you, Um, Emily. It's so fun. So glad. It was great. Okay, so thank you, everybody, for listening, checking out the show, and for telling your friends about the show. I appreciate it. You guys all email me with your questions and your thoughts, and it just helps when you share it with a friend. And also, um, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, because you'll never miss a show again which we never want you to do. And also thank you to my amazing team, Ken, Jamie, intern Shannon, producer Lark, and Michael. And thanks everyone for listening. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com.